I realise now why the coaches would get frustrated. The amount of phones are smashed up, the amount of PSPs are smashed up, um, especially when you were cheating on SOCOM. You used to intimidate me. It was like, oh, no, I don't want to be on your team. You actually rate yourself as a singer. <laughs> no, I don't rate myself. Liar, you do, you do. Wayne Rooney, um, thank you for joining me, mate. First of all, it is your film premiere tonight for the Rooney documentary. Are you looking forward to the premiere tonight? Yeah, I am. I think it's, um, it's going to be an interesting one. It's not something I'd normally do, to be honest, but I just felt it was an opportunity for everyone to see, to see me as a person. Um, I think everyone throughout the last 20 years has seen me um, in headlines or... Um, see me on the pitch, but opportunity for see, for everyone to see who I am, and oh, I think it gives a good insight to them. Um, are you wearing that suit tonight? Because you look a million, mate. Honestly, you look an absolute million. Yeah, dollar. I, I am, and yeah, I very rarely wear suits. And as you you might have seen on the side of the pitch, now as manager, um, I don't I don't like wearing them. I don't feel comfortable in them. So maybe because I've put a little bit of weight on as well. So. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, mate. I was not going to say that, I promise you. Um, we'll talk about your managing in a bit, OK? I feel a little bit underdressed now because I've just got, like, a tracky top on. Um, you said there that it's not something you're sort of too comfortable in doing and making a documentary. If you'd have said to me 10, 15 years ago um, you would be going to a premiere tonight about the Rooney documentary, about your career, about your life, um, I'd have said no chance. Absolutely no chance, knowing you as I, as I do. Um, was there any things doing the documentary that were difficult, hard to talk about, memories that sort of evoked things? Was there anything along the journey that made you really sort of think about doing this? Yeah, there was, there was a lot of times which um, where you're emotional when you're looking back at certain moments in your life. And um, I just felt the, for me to, to open up, I'm a very private person, um, which sounds, sounds a bit odd because... A lot of people seem to think they know me because they see me maybe in a newspaper or on TV, um, but I'm really private with my family, and um, it, it was an opportunity for me to to open up and actually let people see see me. And um, a lot of people would judge me on what they see on the pitch, what they see at times on the front page of a newspaper. Um, but I, I actually wanted to give people an insight into me as a person, go a bit deeper. Um, dealing with issues which I, I've dealt with throughout my life, um, which a lot of people um, didn't, didn't realise was happening. I think if I had to try and describe you as a person, Wayne, I'd say when you're an in an environment that you feel comfortable in, you know the lads, all that kind of stuff, you are gold, you are like, you're like an energizer bunny, you are, haven't you? You've got energy to burn. Um, but like you say, you, you're a bit of a private person when it comes to the, the external media, all that kind of stuff, you just don't like it. And I understand that, because I'm a little bit like that as well, to be fair. Um, but no, that, that, that's exactly how I'd describe you. Would, you would agree with that, surely, yeah? Yeah, definitely. And, um, and I think throughout the years, I could have earned a lot more money than I have done doing different stuff, but um, I really value my time with my family and um, I'd rather keep that behind closed doors. Most well, my whole life I've, I've tried to do that. Um, and I think this is the right time for me to, to, to open up and, and actually let people in and, and see me. All right, let's talk about a few of the things in the documentary because I actually watched it last night. It's a banger, by the way. Um, one of the things I want to talk about, right, is your wedding day when you are doing a bit of singing on the mic, right? And I know you love your singing, yeah? In fact, I would say that you actually rate yourself as a singer. <laughs> uh, what are you saying to that? No, I don't rate myself, but I love singing. I love... Liar, you do. Uh, no, mate, I, I love music. Uh, I've got a stereophonics tattoo on my arm and... Um, so every opportunity um, for me to get up, I, I get up, and then once I'm up, it's very hard to get me down. So um, yeah, I love music. I love I love trying to sing, and um, it's it's good fun. You mentioned um, you mentioned stereophonics there, right? I remember one Christmas party when I was at Man United with you. Um, we were out like we, it was still early on in the night, and we were in a bar somewhere. And then you've just come over and gone, lads, lads, lads. I've got Kelly Jones coming from Stereophonics. Mate, within like half an hour, he bowls through the door. You've got him up on like a table, a chair, singing songs and all sorts. You're joining and it was absolutely belting, mate. That's the sort of people you were rolling with back in the day, weren't it? Um, no, listen, I followed um, 
I think if you've seen in the documentary where I'm saying I'm, I'm going to concerts a lot and I follow Stereophonics around the country and um, then to, to actually then become friends with, with Kelly Jones was was incredible. Um, he sang the next day after me, wedding at me, we had a barbecue, he sang then, which was, was a special moment. As cool as you like, mate. Um, another thing I picked up from watching watching the documentary is you spoke a lot about when you were younger, kind of just this anger that you had in you. Would you, I, for me personally, I would say probably your biggest attribute was your anger. Yeah, um, I was ex- extremely angry and um, I used to, I couldn't control it, even being honest. Um, there was times when the amount of phones I smashed up, the amount of PSPs I smashed up, um, especially when you were cheating on SOCOM. Um, <laughs> to, um, and I couldn't hide that anger. I'd, I'd, I'd just lose it and um, for 10, 20 seconds, um, everything's a blur and anything can happen in that moment. Mate, honestly, I remember when... Cause so I think you're like a year or two younger than me and you used to intimidate me how angry, <laughs> honestly, how angry you would get. If I was on your team, on your six aside team in training, it was like, oh, no, nah, I don't want to be on your team. I don't want to be on your team because I know if I made a mistake, you were coming up to me, you were shout, you were giving it everything, mate. But I honestly think it was your biggest attribute because when you went out there on the pitch, it was like, that's how you could release it all. I agree to a certain extent. And um, I think I'm, what I actually said in the documentary is, there was a period of time where I was really suffering um, and how that was coming out was sometimes on the pitch with that anger and it was arguably probably the best period I had in my career playing while I was suffering behind the scenes as well so um, it can help but then it it always led to um, an explosion which whether that's on the pitch or off the pitch that's what it led to so um, I, I had to really get it in control. It's it's happened, and it's that was what that was the you know in the stage of life that we were in at the time, and um, but we've moved on. I forgive him, but yeah, but what it wasn't acceptable. All right, let's talk about the few occasions that we ended up actually playing against each other. We were on opposite teams, okay? Obviously, we had played together, so we knew each other, but you were always the cockiest little git ever. Whenever you got like a penalty or you scored a goal or something, you'd always give me some little wink or something. Because we used to, obviously, when I, you know, I, at Man United, I wasn't playing very often. So you, you used to practice a lot of penalties against me. And I remember one in particular, um, I was like pointing, I was like, you've got to go that way, you've got to go that way. You put it in that corner, I dive that way. But afterwards, you give me a little wink, you were always up to stuff like that. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I think um, I was always nervous taking a penalty, um, and especially against someone like yourself, who, as you said, I've practised a lot of penalties against, or um, someone like Joe Hart, who you practice in, in training with England. Um, when you get a penalty against them, you're always nervous because they know where you're going to go, really. Um, and I was very, normally I was always one-sided with my penalties a lot of the time. Um, so when, when you can tend to keep the wrong way, it's always a, a nice feeling. All right, so we're getting to the end of the Wayne Rooney playing career, OK? Management's around the corner. Was it an obvious, easy decision for you? And when did you know as well? Like, what was the point where you thought, right, playing days are done? No, I knew what, once I went back to Everton from Manchester United and, and then I went to the States, that was me really preparing for, for management. And, um, and then obviously I come back to the championship with Derby County and as player coach. Um, and I knew that I was going to go into management. To, it could be in a year, it could be in three years' time. So I was ready, I was ready for it. And um, when Philip Koku um, left the club, um, I knew that that was my chance to to go in and I put my name forward. I believed in myself. Um, I believed that I could keep the club up, um, keep the club in the division. Um, and it would be tough, but I believed in myself. I believed in the players and, um, yeah, it was an easy decision, really. Was was there a, a certain time, a certain point where you thought the playing part of it was just too hard? Was it, was it, was it almost like your body couldn't cope or was it just, right, I know I want to do this management thing, so I'm just going to dive into it? No, and I think I I went back into midfield into 
I'm more of a deeper midfield and um, if I'm being honest, I still think I could play now. Um, obviously, I'd have to. I do too, mate. I, I do too, <laughs> I'd have honestly. to um, lose a bit, lose a bit of weight to do that. But I still <laughs> believe I could, I've, I've joined in the sessions a few times with the um, with the players, and um, I still believe I'd, I'd be the best player. I'm asking right, Wayne <laughs> because I'm getting to that age. Like I say, I'm 38 years old, right? And I need to know what it's going to take for me to go. Boom, that's enough. Do you know what I mean? Whether it's like just whether I lose the buzz or whatever, but I think you found the perfect blend where you still get that buzz of being part of a changing room, but it's on a different side. So, being a manager compared to being a player, is it a more difficult job or is it just completely different? It's a lot more difficult um, and, and completely different. Um, every day, um, trying to put the plan the sessions, and then um, I realise now when a player. Um, is late or a player um, pulls out the train at the last minute, um, then you have to adjust the sessions. I realise why the coaches will get frustrated. Um, but yeah, it's just planning. Everything is, is planning, making sure everything's right. Um, and then um, obviously trying to get the best out of the players and develop, the, especially the younger players, to t turn them into better players, which will obviously benefit the club. So, so how do you deal with those little setbacks? Like you say, the last minute sort of li little things that really do your head in as a manager. Like, what kind of a manager is Wayne Rooney? Yeah, I, I put a lot of trust in in the players. And, and for instance, if a player comes to me and says, I know I've played under different managers and different styles and, and different ways of dealing with people. Um, if a player comes to me and says he's he doesn't feel right, um, whether it's a knock or it's a muscle injury or, or whatever, and I go to the next player. Um, um, no player is... In, in my opinion, can can take advantage and, and say, right, I'm going to leave training today because he knows he's going to be guaranteed a place in the team. If someone's got an issue um, and they, they feel they can't train, um, the next player will, will play the next game. Do you think Do you think football's evolved to the point where the old school managers, like the managers we sort of played from, I don't, for me personally, I don't think you can be that kind of guy anymore. I think football's changed where you have to be a bit more personable, you have to put an arm around players, you have to understand what they're going through in their personal life as well. Is that part of the journey, learning how to be a manager with dealing things, with things like that? Yeah, 100%. Um, I think you need to, first of all, get to know the player, get to know the, the background of the player, get to know the, the, the family history, um, and really know everything about that person, um, because if you know everything, you can you can put an arm around them, you can help them with personal issues if they need the help, um, and encourage them. But I still, you know, also you need to be firm. You need to set high demands and high expectations. But you you really need to, especially this day and age. Um, I think with social media, with mental health issues, you certainly need to make sure the players have got everything they need. Um, and they've got no excuses to then go out on the pitch and perform. Yeah, I'd say, mate, the um, with the rise of social media, I think we were fairly lucky that back in our sort of, you know, I mean, the, the days when we were starting to play football, that it wasn't such a big deal and we weren't on it so much. The players nowadays, I see it still in the changing moods. You know, you've got these kids, 20, 21 years old, they finish a game, they're straight on social media. Is that something you try and get into their heads and say, lads, you need to stay off this kind of stuff? It's difficult. It's a difficult one because... Social media can bring um, a lot of advantages as well, it can, commercially and um, financially now. It can um, really bring a lot of help to, to players, um, but also it can bring a lot, a lot of negativity and a lot of abuse. And um, If you're on it, I feel you need to be prepared and ready. Uh, I'm not saying um, the, it's a platform for people to take abuse, but you need to understand that there's a big possibility that could happen. Um, so you need to try and grow um, some big shoulders and 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 be be ready to take that. And if there is a, a serious issue, make sure you report it. But um, for me, it's not something I, I check all the time. I, I'll, I'll look at it now and again, and um, it's a way for me to interact with the fans um, at the right time. Um, but it's not something which um, I, I really rely on. Um, where I think a lot of the young players um, are on it constantly. I think. You, you've got to say for any of those Derby players, 
all they've got to do is look at their manager to, to realise, like Wayne Rooney back in the day, had the weight of the world on his shoulder. I'd honestly say, at one point, Wayne, you were probably one of the most recognisable names, faces in the world, for sure, yeah? Had to be. Um, and I think for any of those Derby players out there, it's got to be a good thing to... Obviously, there's a lot of pressure on them, but they just need to look at their manager. If ever they need any advice on how to deal with it, it's to go to a guy like you. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really open with the players, and um, I encourage questions from the players in team meetings. Um, on a one-on-one -on -one, um, basis, I encourage the players to open up and, and ask questions and, and we can solve solutions together. Um, I think that's important. Um, but yeah, there's, there's pressure in any walk of life, um, in football. Um, there's people who are sleeping rough on the streets. Um, we've got a different type of pressure. Um, so there's pressure in, in any walk of life and you, it's how you deal with it, how you, you respond to it. And as I, I say in the documentary, I struggled for a long time with it. Um, I feel I'm in a very good place now, which um, is actually allowing me to, to be the best per version of me I can and it actually allows me to evolve as a manager, um, where I completely understand for young players now, if there is any issues, come and, and speak to me. Um, I've been through a lot um, and I certainly believe I could help um, a lot of them young players. Which is the easier job, being a player or being a manager? Player. 100%. Manager, it's... It, 100%. 100% me. It's, um, as a manager, it's the ups and downs. And um, when you win a game, it's... For, for that split second after after the final whistle, it's uh, a great feeling. And then it's relief. And then it's looking at the next game. Um, but when you lose a game, there's so many things will go through your head. Should you make made this substitution? Should you have played this player? Why did you make this change? Um, so there's so many things which go through your head, which um, you need to get over quickly because you need to plan and get ready for the next game. You've got the red carpet tonight, okay? Wayne Rooney out on the red carpet. <laughs> You've surely been on red carpets before. You've surely. But tonight's a bit different. You're the main man. You're the host. So you're going to have to have your teeth out tonight, smiling your head off. You're looking forward to it. Yeah, I've always dreamt of, of walking down the red carpet to my own show, so... <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, it, it, it is what it is. I, once I, I knew I was doing this documentary, I knew that this would come up and um, I'll get through it. I'll, <laughs> I'll get through it, but um, <laughs> the, the, once I get through that, the movie, um, the documentary will, will play and, and then I'm sure myself and all the other guests here tonight will enjoy it. Right, final question. Which part of the documentary tonight do you think most people will be surprised about? Which will make people talk about most? I don't know. There's there's a few different things in there and I think probably the, there's a few things. There's just, Obviously there's times where I talk about suffering with, um, with alcohol. There's times when um, I'm talking about mentally really being down and, and lost at times. Um, and Obviously, there's, there's bits in it behind the scenes with me and my wife and children. So I think there's a few different things in there which might make people look at it and think, you know, I didn't realise that. For someone who's been constantly in the in the press over the last 20 years, um, for people to then sit there and think, you know, I didn't realise that um, and, and get an insight to it. Brilliant, Wayne. Uh, like I said, mate, I know it'll be an absolute banger. All the best tonight, mate. Cheers, Wicked. Ben. Thank Good you. to see you.